On the spot news media, we got the latest news. We don't care about the views, we just represent it right. Put local news internationally every night. On the spot, wave that Jamaican flag from left to right. Let's get it right, y'all know the type. We ain't dealing with the hype. We make it take flight. Yeah, man, my viewers and subscribers, what a one. A blessed and wonderful Tuesday evening to each and every person out there tuning into On The Spot News Media. Now my peeps, I have a few stories to share with you, the regular members of Chan Public and also members of the diaspora. So please like the video, share the video, watch the entire vlog so you can get a full understanding and a better appreciation of everything we are going in Jamaica. So watch this now my peeps, we're going to kick it off with a knockings and clappings that took place over the weekend over there in the eastern Kingston Police Division. So on Sunday, January 28th, 2024, sometime about 1.45 p.m., a man known as Wayne Brown, but more popularly known as Siobhan, get can up, leaving him lifeless, no longer among the land of the living. He is said to be of a Crescent Road address over there in East Kingston. No information reaching on the spot news media is that Siobhan Brown or Wayne Brown as he's known just parked his car along Slipdock Road and walked along a pathway that connects Slipdock Road to Crescent Road. It is said that when he was walking along Crescent Road, he was pounced upon by three armed criminal elements traveling on foot who opened gunfire, hitting him multiple times. It is said that he got hit in the upper body and head. It is said that when Siobhan was attacked by the culprits, he ran back onto Slipdock Road where he fell on the ground. After the knockings and clappings subsided, it is said that the criminal elements on foot ran and entered into a waiting Toyota Probox motor car, which sped off. It is said that that Probox had a registration plate affixed on it that had the numbers 3556 and the letters JQ. It is said that Siobhan was transported to the KPH where he was pronounced, you know what? Now there's a whole lot that surrounds Siobhan, knockings and clappings, and we are going to get down into the meat of the matter. Now for those who have been watching on the Spot News Media for a while, I've covered a series of knockings and clappings that took place over there in the general Burger Gully community of East Kingston. Now, Wayne Brown, knockings and clappings, just no come so. It is in relation to the ongoing intra-gang feud between members of Bottom Burger Gully and Top Burger Gully. Now, that knockings and clappings that took the life of Wayne Brown, otherwise known as Siobhan, is said to have been carried out by yours truly presently on your screen. This criminal element here identified as Javan Lemonius, but more popularly known in the criminal underworld as Kojo. It is said that he carried out that hit on Wayne Brown, otherwise known as Siobhan, because he is directly related to the now incarcerated Kevin Smith, a.k.a. Talis. Yeah, man. So, I'm basically just going to carry some food for go give Talis in a jail and them just lay away at him and clap him away. So, Kojo is said to be the trigger man behind the knockings and clappings of Wayne Brown, otherwise known as Siobhan, a cousin of Talis. Yeah, man. So the war has just turned up a notch and a reprisal on Kojo and his cantangarous family members, might I add, is eminent. Yeah, man. Now, Wayne Brown, knockings and clappings can also be coming from another Eastern Kingston strongman who we are talking about. Rooster. Yeah, man. 
Now I'm pretty sure many of the ones and ones them good are one that say, why you call Rooster name? How Rooster even get entangled in a shavan, knockings and clappings? Well, watch this. Remember that Shavan or Wayne Brown is related to Talis, right? So, of course, Rooster would have more than enough reason for want to see Talis family get clapped away. The fact that other family member there I bring food and other items to Talis from Talis get lock up. It makes absolute sense for Rooster for one and get him out. Because Rooster have made it abundantly clear that Talis is responsible for the knockings and clappings of his son known as Mari. Yeah man, this is Mari presently on your screen. So now as we speak, Rooster not really have that strength they like one time for really put up a strong resistance in terms of a reprisal against the people who is allegedly the ones that took Mary's body and dumped his body in Vineyard Town. So the easiest thing for do if it take out the reprisal against Talis. And if this is the case, let me tell you now this, things are going to turn upside down in the Kingston Eastern Police Division. So people who is living in and around the concentrated areas of which I just spoke, who don't know yourself, Please be cognizant of what is happening in your immediate surroundings. And also to the security forces attached to the Kingston Eastern Police Division. Also take notes and put the necessary mechanisms in place. Because this warrior is definitely far from over. Yeah man, a word to the wise. Now over there in the St. Andrew Central Police Division, two men who reportedly attempted to rob a man along Mullines Road in Kingston yesterday, that's Monday, are now in the custody of the police after reportedly being found with a fake gun. Yeah, man. So according to reports from the Half a Tree Police, the robber suspects attempted to rob a man along the roadway, but the victim managed to escape. The matter was reported to the police who subsequently went in pursuit of the men, matching the suspect's description. The men were later apprehended in the vicinity of the Spanish town bus stop where they were searched and the imitation firearm found. It is said that they were taken into custody pending further investigations. But just sorry say, poor me just sorry say. But anyway... Make it rest. Right, that's all. Yeah, man. Now, over there in the St. Catherine South Police Division, in the community of Zambia, in Central Village, poor me, I tell you, my peeps, the thing rough on your screen, my peeps, is the active scene where the police are on a crime scene in Zambia, in Central Village, where it is said that three shallow graves were found and two of the graves contain human remains yeah man no early days yet as it relates to what i just stated so on the spot news media will most definitely be giving you an update in subsequent newscast now over there in the western part of the island in the parish of chilani the parish of Chilani was rocked yet again with another brutal and bloody knockings and clappings. Yeah, man. But the difference is this time, some residents are breathing a sigh of relief as one of the known knockings and clappings coming out of Chilani was found lifeless. Yeah, man. 
Now the bullet riddled body of a Chilani man who is presently on your screen. He was accused of a fatal knockings and clappings of a man, but was out on bail for that knockings and clappings. He was discovered in his community by residents early Monday morning. The deceased man present on your screen is a known knockings and clappings all dirty kind of boy most definitely he has since been identified as romario green otherwise known as boa said to be of a top street address in falmo chulani so reports reaching on the spot news media is that sometime around 12 15 a.m residents alerted the police to the body laying on the road in a section of tilston it is said that upon the arrival of the police, the police saw the body of the man with what appeared to be some holy pecan of wounds all over the upper body and head. The Chilani police stated that no motive has been established for his fatal knockings and clappings. Well, you can plan can and expect finna reap can. Yeah man, pun intended. I just saw the thing set. Up a jan shop. And still in the parish of Chulani, we are going to talk about a knockings and clappings that took place sometime around the 21st or the 22nd of January. Yeah, man. So basically, not too long ago. Now, his knockings and clappings was the second knockings and clappings that has resulted in the loss of life of a man in the parish of Trelawney since the start of the year. So last week, Sunday night, knockings and clappings of this man, presently on your screen, identified as 40-year-old Joel Coke, but otherwise known as O'Neill in the streets of a Troy district address in Trelawney. Yeah, man. Now reports reaching on the spot news media is that sometime around 9 p.m. Joel R. O'Neill, as he's affectionately called, was sitting on his motor vehicle in the Troy district. He was sitting along the main road when he was approached by two men. It is said that one of the men, who was armed with a firearm, opened fire, hitting him all over the upper body and head. He got hit multiple times. It is said that the criminal elements went aboard a motorcycle and fled the area. O'Neill was assisted to the hospital where he was pronounced, you know what. Well, this may just seem like a regular walk in the park. You don't know another one bites the dust type of thing. But I would want the Chilani police to look deep within the family of Joel O'Neill Cook. Yeah, man. Because he had a not so good relationship with one of his sisters, who the streets is pointing fingers at presently. Stating that she is the main suspect in the knockings and clappings of her brother because they were at loggerheads along with other siblings over a house that was left behind by their deceased mother. Yeah, man. Now let's look at the scenario. Let me show you, say, a hit was most definitely placed on the head. Of O'Neill. He was not alone when he was pounced upon by those criminal elements, as he is a known farmer of all different types of yams in Chilani. So he was in the process of selling some of his market produces to a man who always purchased yams in large sums from him. So he was not alone when the knackis and clappies them approach. But a him alone get can up. The man them walk straight up to him and just gun him down 
and take with himself, leaving the other man in awe. The man couldn't believe him literally pissing pants. Yeah, man. No, that just goes to show that he was directly targeted. Now, it is said that O'Neill and other siblings are having an internal family dispute with a sister who now occupies the home that their mother passed away and leave. Now, that sister is said to be known as Tracy. It is said that Tracy never treat the mother good any at all whilst she was alive. Hence the reason why the other siblings are at loggerheads with her about her taking ownership of the home of their now deceased mother. And not just only that, Tracy has a son that is a known criminal element. Not necessarily a nakis and clappis, but he's a known scammer. And anyway, scammer there, guns and ammunition follow. So he's a known criminal element who is also harboring other known scammers from the community in that particular home. So the brother, especially the one who lost his life, Joel O'Neill Cook, was more adamant than any other sibling that Tracy cannot remain in their mother's home, especially with the fact that our son is harboring unscrupulous people in that home. And it is just really sad, my peeps. But it is a known fact that this worrying trend is slowly becoming a new norm in Jamaica where family disputes results in hits being placed on families' heads, especially as it relates to ownership over lands, valuables, or other type of properties. That is the way how some families are settling their disputes, sadly, these days. So officers attached to the Chilani Police Division look within the family members of Joel O'Neill Cook for your answers. Yeah, man. So anyway, my peeps, remember to like, share, subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned to On The Spot News Media as I continue to bring you fresh news and updates in subsequent newscasts. On The Spot News Media. Yeah, man.